after 25 fucking years of doing Orange Goblin, this is what makes it worthwhile. So you know you're a fucking wonderful person. I'm here with Witch Stripper at Paper OH Doom vs. Steiner in Sheffield. Hello, I'm Rich and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm Chris and I've been playing bass far too long. Yes. <laughs> I'm poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sean from Tender Slug. I play guitar. It's uh, best in the cat as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, noises like this as well. Ooh. So I'm Sean, I'm the vocalist. And I'm Jake, I play drums. I'm Dave. I'm John. And I'm Bill. Right. Two drums. Two drums. You're all different. Ah, of course. Ben. I play uh, singer. He plays. I'm Chris. <laughs> I just play. I play the drums. Joe, guitar. Mine, the bass player. Oh, Goblin is a band that's been around for 25 years. Uh, my name is Miss uh, Esben, I think, and I play drums in Monolord. My name is Thomas, I play guitar and I sing in Monolord. Mika in the for, background. For, for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Clutch is always the one we've got to into. Yeah, Clutch is a big influence. Yeah. Um, obviously Goblin, obviously Sabbath, Zeppelin. Do like a bit of Ghost as well, just to piss people off. Patrick Swayze is brilliant in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. love him. Yeah. Massive fan of Robert. Um, at the moment, there's, well, there's the brothers of Rosa, these guys are marvelous. They're important. They're, um, they're really, really good. Well, it's just Sabbath for me anyway. Uh, Got a lot of influences, but a lot of influences anyway. I listen to Trouble all the day. Uh, I'm still quite into like really trying to do and stuff. So see, I'm all into like As I Lay Dying and Lamb of God. He's like Death and stuff like that. Obviously influenced by Black Sabbath. But my peers at the time were like of Cathedral, Anathema, and Paradise Lost, yeah. and the doom metal bands of this Actually. country. We also fell in love with uh, the '70s sort yeah. of. Big fluid bands like Trouble and Pentagram and yeah. that sort of thing. I'm really enjoying um, Kiss. <laughs> you keep me quite so old school there, you know? Yeah. We have kind of obscure music tastes. Um, so I really like Jethro Tull and Kate Bush and um, nothing new. Um, bands in this genre, I really like stuff like Goat Snake Down. Mm. I'm really looking forward to Monolord. Monolord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. I listen a lot to. Deep Purple, and then I was starting to play guitar. Um, yeah, and then it moved on, moved on to heavier and... Yeah, of course, Black Sabbath and all that, Zeppelin and, and all that. And yeah, but those are the bands that I listened to when I grew up. Same for me, I've been listening to all kinds of rock since I was this big, but I mean, it hasn't been like moving into Doom and now I only listen to Doom and heavy stuff. It's like we all three of us listen to all kinds of music. Of course, I mean, it would be boring if we only listen to Doom all the time. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Phil Collins. Phil the Camelot. Yeah, mate. That's the one. Which one's that? Jack and Pastorius. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Scene in Ireland. I mean, the, the underground scene is doing really well. It's, it's, it's a 
part of the environment right now. It really is. It's pretty cool. What's the underground music scene like in Sweden? The live scene is dying. More or less. Maybe. Yeah, but at the same time, we have those small clubs like yeah, the, it's, uh, yeah, it's like the neighborhood pubs or whatever in in areas in Gothenburg popping up with gigs all over. But the I think the the bigger venues or the the venues like between capacity of hundred to five hundred, there's not that much anymore. A lot of people that want to start clubs and want to start like booking shows but it's really hard to get people there and it's really hard to get some movement going which means that most bands they most Swedish bands they they don't tour in Sweden we don't tour in Sweden but just you can tour in Sweden. yeah you've had a busy summer anyway played quite a few festivals and events and cities but which one really stood out what was the highlight which one would you really want to do again if I'm you could I'm I'm first. First. that was brutal that was a bit drinking, sad. playing, having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was really good. You know? Setting an alien to interview, just a bit like a holiday and doing what we like at the same time. Playing it's more of a social event as well. So you got yeah. to like hang out with people and or friends and stuff and yeah. it's like that's what it's about. Yeah, a bit good cool. community feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so what's the best festival show you've ever played? Both organization, what's not just a couple, like two months ago, was the biggest thing. It wasn't the largest stage, yeah. but it was the biggest gig by far, biggest crowd, most important, most. We played to as many people there as we probably would play to in an entire year of smaller shows, you know. And, and when you think about it like that, it's like well, you have to really make the most of it. So that would have been, and that was definitely the. Um, Biggest one. London's always great. Yeah. London's always fantastic. Yeah, good times. There was places in Germany. Yeah, yeah. To Germany. Mm. Yeah, the crowd is always amazing. As most places in Europe. To yeah. Be fair. yeah. Uh, Scotland. Yeah, we yeah. played uh, Glasgow with the Obsessed a few months ago. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I mean, there were two things really good, but yeah. Glasgow really stuck out. Mm. Yeah. Birmingham's always good. Yeah. Sheffield. Nottingham, obviously, hometown. Manchester um, days. So that, that's totally the other way around is it's really weird when you go somewhere new mm. and people turn up with a bit of t shirts on that you've never met before. That's, yeah. that's, they can't be just lost, can they? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we played um, in Cheltenham the other week. Oh. Brand new place, just yeah. opened. It's like the second week it was open, we played there and there's like five or ten people there with which strip of t-shirts. Yeah. So like, well, well, they did check merge later on that night and it's all Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we see progression year on year, do you know what I mean? Because we do fucking work hard, you know what I mean? We give it all the time. But it's worth it because every time we're like a bit higher on roster or different yeah. or higher stage or something. And I think as long as it keeps doing that, it's worth putting extra effort in, isn't it? If I can quit my job in yeah, the next five years, mate, my actual full time job, I literally don't give a shit about anything else. That is the that's it, yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> You went professional for about a year or so when uh, Eulogy came out. What do you think it was about that album that sort of picked up so well? Because we've been away for like five years. Yeah, and I, think, I mean, at the time, I think it was our strongest, yeah. strongest record, both musically and production-wise. And as everyone says, the fact that we've been away for five years since Eating Through Fire. We've we still been playing, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Cool, there, there was just a demand for a new record. And if we're, if we're honest, Personally, I think that was the strongest bunch of songs we've ever fucking written. But like there was the five-year gap to have five years worth of ideas. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we still so together in two weeks. weeks. Yeah, we still yeah, still wrote the album in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think it's what I'm most proud of. I think we've structured the songs a little bit better on that, that album. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. There's not so many like, big jammy bits. It's all kind of... But the band's been around for quite a while in uh, different incarnation, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we met Sean end of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, and we've just really kicked on from there, really. We've seen a new album, and no song at all. Yep, so our album's out next month, and it's called Violet Hour, and it's out on October the 11th. Yeah, yeah it's an exciting time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
what are you planning for next year? A couple more gigs on the horizon. Video, we talked about it. We may be off. Again, getting album out. And getting an album out, which may end up seeing its way on a label. And there may be a vinyl release on that as well. Oh. Some cool ideas if we do. So, yeah, we'll keep a look out for that one. The, uh, the new album's out, so anyway, how are you finding the reception's been for this one? Well, it's been pretty good. It's been amazing, yeah. absolutely. But I, it's, it's really interesting because the songs that, that I uh, didn't think would get as much attention as it did, it, like the third song, like Larvae. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem to really like it, and I didn't think that that song would be like a favorite or, or so, but it, it's. Seems like people like it. How do you keep things fresh at this point in your careers? God no. Oh, there's no fresh shower every morning. <laughs> <laughs> we just do what we do, I guess, and it, it falls into we, some sort we of... We tried genre. some disco do a few weeks ago. Oh, oh that's that's been three or so, yeah, disco do. Yeah, yeah, that, that's new. But yeah, that's new. It's got to be sometimes. And what, what does inspire you lyrically, like, for the last ten years or so? Porn. <laughs> nah, it's... <laughs> it could be anything from watching a movie, reading a book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. fucking shit porn that Jez has shown me on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> like the fog, for example, the fog. Slow, it's slow, and lumbering, and, and, and so the, the, then they put the lyrics of the fog to that song rather mm. than putting the music to it, and it fitted perfectly. Lyrically? Yeah. Oh, there is your department, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, I don't like love songs, don't go. You don't go there, do you? Um, Obviously, I sort of band it's usually like whiskey, V8, a uh, big truck, yeah, which I was trying to stay away from. So, like last album, most of the songs, to be honest, meant a lot to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we're either stuff we've just gone through, because yeah. we haven't had a bit of going through trauma. And then um, just stuff that's going I mean, I have a storm, which is named my last band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from the perspective of Mother Earth talking about. Um, Wiping us out basically yeah, and fucking you know what I mean, which is pretty topical and uh, a lot of the songs are based around mental health and uh, relationships and the usual stuff in draw depressive <laughs> things out of love, lies. Um, and as well the album's called Violet Hour, which is about part of the day where the sun goes down and the sky turns violet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the track title of the album is Violet Hour as well, so it's about that and the night and all the ghouls that come out. What is the best lyric in a Master Charger song? <laughs> oh, there are so many. John well, Steele's your cheese. Yeah, some about meat and cheese, you reckon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of the lyrics, so really. I mean, I'll write them, but you know, I don't know. For me, it's, I don't know. But I've been See the Death song. Charge. Good, yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some stuff, and then there's one, one song in particular which is full of double arm tangas. Because I've asked to write about a Victorian dildo. <laughs> oh, right. Once, and I came up with this real Tommy Cheek song. It's called Violent One. It's our first album. It's cringeworthy. It's dead, black and lawless, a bit waspy. Yeah, <laughs> I did it for a laugh, but. Uh, Somebody begged me and said, but you can't write a song about Victorian dildo, so I did. It's a pretty unique concept, so well, I put it through that way. <laughs> <laughs> We're 
trying to try and fucking make a point of writing material, new material yeah, on the road yeah. as well. We've never found that to be productive. It doesn't work for us really. No. No. And the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> exactly, we'd rather just sit and scratch our pollens. <laughs> Sitting there looking at Facebook going, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah. When there's a big well down there, where you can just go for a walk and find somewhere. You just find that line because you can become. Yeah, you can find it. Some weird things. Oh, I've got to stay in the dressing room. We normally scour the whole town to find out where the fucking best drug dealer is. <laughs> Where's the heroin? And then the, <laughs> report them to the police. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you have? Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be fun to have Horsley, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister, Rob Halford. Something of lollipop 
Pops on the stage. Is that one of the other bands? It's very sweet. Do you want more honey pop? What was the thinking behind the cover of Wicked Game live on the last recording? Just it would make a really good doomy yeah. sounding yeah. song and it really worked. So we went through a, a few songs and then we all agreed on that one. Yeah. So yeah. we were like, yeah, it's the right one to do. Yeah, there's other names. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and then play that one again, that's it. All right, so the, the concept of an actual 10 ton slug in real life for me is terrifying. Yeah. But if that was real, yeah. how much soul would you need to defeat a 10 ton slug? I don't know. You would probably wouldn't get too close to a wither salt before you got smushed, so you know, it's uh it's a little you will never defeat the tent on stuff. You just anger him more. Uh, just put it that way, yeah. You just really piss it up. You're gonna put a concert on and, and you can bring back one band from the dead and Monolord is gonna support. Who do you choose? I would choose uh Yethro Tal from nineteen seventy one. That's very specific. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> 19 through 1. Bring I, back Vaughn Lord, we're dead. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what he said. So we can Which is Mika in the background. For, for ourselves. <laughs> uh, ben, you're, you're a tall gentleman, but who is the shortest oh, come on. musician that you've played with? <laughs> come on, really? The I mean, shortest geez, musician. Dear, dear. Oh, dear. I thought he was going to say in the band. <laughs> Yeah, Dion uh, was, was smaller than me and I'm pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> There's a future quiz show. Yeah. Have you played with a shorter musician than Dion? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any. Um, he was, he was you're, uh, you're stranded on a desert island, but there's a record player with you. You can bring one album. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Forever. Always. Forever. I'm just going to go a bit more mainstream than that. I'm going to go a bit of Virgin Island and Slipknot. I'm not going to pick one of you, it's too hard. <laughs> you like Kiss, don't you? You pick Kiss. Oh, I think, think Kiss is element of you. What is the heaviest Modern Lord riff? <clears throat> the heaviest Modern Lord riff. Oh, that's low one. I like that part two of that song. Mm, it's great. I think the uh, I think the ending of either We Will Burn or Larvae. Uh, what is the best Orange Goblin album artwork? Oh, no, I, 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 like, I like the Wolf Bites Back. I think it's one because it's simple, it's effective, yeah. it's striking. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. I think we've over it a little bit in the past. I know the Big Black is a favourite mm -hmm. one as well. Mm -hmm. And Coup de Grass is great because it's cosy. And it's got that horror sort of. I would go with Coup myself. Yeah. yeah. I know we're not the fucking greatest band in the world. We never claim to be. But we've always been there. We've always fucking given our best for fucking British metal. And loads of fucking bands have fucking come and fallen by the wayside during that 25 fucking years. And Orange Goblin is still fucking there, flying the flag for British fucking metal. Uh, what, what, what do you say, Ola? What, the last word for our fans? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words for your fans? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>